often considered one of the most important and influential figures in jazz. Duke Ellington also set a standard for American music. Today we are going to take a brief look at the history and music of the composer, band leader, and pianist, Duke Ellington. Edward Kennedy Ellington was born in 1899 in Washington, D.C. and had a comfortable middle-class upbringing. He earned the nickname Duke due to his classy demeanor from being raised in a very dignified family. Both of Duke's parents played piano and hoped their son would as well, though he resisted and was more interested in the visual arts. Once he was a teenager, he was influenced by jazz musicians such as James P. Johnson, Fats Waller, and Willie the Lion Smith and wrote his first jazz song, Soda Fountain Rag. Duke continued to play in jazz band gigs until he formed his own band in 1924, the Washingtonians. They eventually moved to New York and began working at the Kentucky Club, and most notably, the Cotton Club, a big deal in Harlem. Duke began composing alongside leading and playing in his band, standing out from other band leaders by not simply writing music for the instruments, but rather for the skills and abilities of the individual players. As their popularity grew at the Cotton Club, Ellington's band saw bigger audiences, radio performances, and recording opportunities. After his era at the Cotton Club ended in 1931, a new one began while jazz music was simultaneously transforming to a more swing-inspired sound. Duke, however, was focused on refining his music to create colorful moods for his audiences. In the 1940s, critical band members such as Ben Webster joined, along with co-composer Billy Strayhorn, where famous pieces such as Take the A-Train were born. The late 40s unfortunately saw a departure of critical band members as well as the decline in popularity of big band orchestras for smaller, progressive jazz bands. As a result, Ellington re-established as a concert orchestra playing at Carnegie Hall, expanding his reach beyond jazz listeners. One of Duke's most significant live performances took place in 1956 at the Newport Jazz Festival, where during the performance of Diminuendo and Crescendo in Blue, the crowd went into a wild riot during a 27-chorus sax solo from Paul Gonzalez. Needless to say, this sparked Ellington's passion to continue making music. He recorded over 300 more songs up until his death. Being the dynamic composer that he was, Ellington's style evolved, but was always based upon rhythm and instrumentation. He would focus on building timber with growling brass, creating moods through blues characteristics, and giving his band members places to shine with concerto-like solos. Billy Strayhorn described Duke's music, saying, Each member of his band is to him a distinctive tone color and set of emotions, which he mixes with others equally distinctive to produce a third thing which I like to call the Ellington Effect. Sometimes this mixing happens on paper, and frequently right on the bandstand. I have often seen him exchange parts in the middle of a piece, because the man and the part weren't the same character. What may sound normal to a listener of one of his solo-oriented songs is actually a meticulously crafted piece in which Duke recognized not what sound he needed, but whose sound fit best. This allowed his songs to have irreplaceable character derived from the collaboration of everyone in his band. When it came to his early orchestra, Ellington was known to keep separate the reed and brass instruments, with little crossover taking place in his songs. In terms of timber, plungers were used heavily for the brass to create the band's signature growl, which also allowed for use of non-conventional tonal writing techniques. Later, Duke focused on complex, thick piano-like harmonies by voicing instruments contrary to standards. There also came a departure from the heavy use of solos to instead focus on the composition's structural integrity. His later works also utilized more dissonance and closer chord voicing, along with the smaller band and letting the reed section shine more than ever. Just as his style changed over the years, so did many of his songs as he would rework them multiple times to vary the sound or feature different vocal artists, such as in Mood Indigo. Duke Ellington's contributions to jazz music over his lifetime are insurmountable. He composed over 3,000 songs, won 13 Grammy Awards, and was even presented with the Medal of Freedom. The care he put into his songs can still be heard today, from carefully selected soloists to thick, dissonant instrumentation and harmonies. 
Though the record shows Ellington made jazz and swing music, he would be hesitant to give it a label. As he once said, there are simply two kinds of music, good music and the other kind. The only yardstick by which the result should be judged is simply that of how it sounds. If it sounds good, it's successful. If it doesn't, it has failed.